okay, everyone, I, I'd like to get started, and uh, even though it's not on the agenda, I'm going to break with, break with the agenda and ask everyone, please stand and recite the pledge of allegiance. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Okay, this is so much fun. I'll call the order. Uh, first off, roll call. And I'm not great at this, but uh, all, all, all of them are Smith. Present. All of them Snyder. Here. Here. That word. All of them Simpson. Present. No, all of them Osborne. Present. <laughs> Alderman Saunders? Present. Alderman Swift? Here. Okay. We have a quorum. Um, the uh, first item on the agenda after that is uh, the mayor's comments. I have a couple of comments to make. Uh, first and foremost, the purpose of this meeting uh, is actually uh, began to be because uh, yours truly uh, failed to note during our last meeting that was a requirement uh, of the board of all of them to elect two members uh, to the planning and zoning committee. And it's actually a commission, it's tight, it's, it's actually, it's a, it's a commission, it's established by, by ordinance, it's very specific. And consequently, we want to, we want to do that tonight, we're gonna to get to it in a minute. Um, the purpose of why it's so uh, pending and necessary to get done quickly is this, the, the, the school has been waiting for weeks to get their site plan approved, and I'm pretty sure they're running out of patience. And I do not want their football team to come over here and tackle me, so we're going to kind of move forward with this. Uh, in addition, I do have an announcement to make of some seriousness. Uh, this afternoon, uh, I received the following letter. The date of the day, the 25th, 2024, is Toronto Miller. I am resigning as the city clerk with the city of Monroe City effective immediately. I will turn in any and all property of Monroe City by 4-26-24. Thank you, Jennifer McDaniel, and signed by her. Uh, in consult with the city attorney, it is within the purvey of my office to accept her resignation, and it is hereby on the record stated her resignation is hereby accepted. <coughs> We will be dealing with that in a later, uh, later meeting. Uh, so the next thing I want to do is go ahead and uh, ask the board to nominate and then elect two of your members to the Planning and Zoning Commission. So I will entertain <coughs> nominations at this time. <laughs> we have a nomination of Greg Smith. Do, uh, do, I, do I have a second to his nomination? Do you have a second? I'll accept it if that's if you're asking. <laughs> <laughs> My volunteer is acting. <laughs> All in favor? Aye. 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 All opposed? Greg, you have been officially appointed to be the alderman member of the Planning and Zoning Commission for the City of Monroe City. Congratulations. I know you do a great job. I need one more, and I say I apologize. We need one more uh, alderman representative on the Planning and Zoning Commission. Do I have a nomination of someone from your membership? Thank you for making that easy. 
easy. Okay, the uh, next thing on uh, this list is, is going to be modified uh, a little bit. Uh, I'm, I'm at odds. I think we can go ahead and, 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 and do this uh, with, with a, uh, a modification. Uh, and that modification at this point in time would be to uh, remove the discussion on item five. And what it is, is we're discussing the end of the pro probationary period for certain city employees. And what that means is at this point in time, if the board so uh, so agrees, they would be uh, enabled to receive uh, a monetary increase to their hourly compensation. Uh, with the most re recent decision change, uh, I'm going to ask uh, for the board's permission to move the discussion for the probationary period uh, of the city clerk, utility clerk, and the administrative assistant to after the completion of the closed session. I will need a motion to do that. I'll make a motion that we move those discussions until after the completion of our. Very good. Do I have a second? Second. Okay. All in favor? Aye. Aye. All opposed? Okay, we will therefore, we will, we will move uh, item five to after the closed session. The next thing on the agenda is board priorities for the city clerk's office and financial reporting. What that, what that is about is to, is to uh, place onto the record a consensus of what this board's priorities are uh, relative to the significant amount of work ahead of us on correcting the current deficiencies that occur in being able to provide the information to the auditor, the auditor who is currently uh, under our employ to complete the audit which is necessary for, for many of the financial issues, especially those surrounding bonds uh, going forward. Uh, in addition, we have the uh, situation with the uh, reconciliation of bank records from October of 2022 to current. And then we have the condition of the general ledger having not been properly maintained for the same period. And so in order to give the appropriate guidance to our administrative staff, I thought that it would probably be a very good idea that we gather and have a discussion uh, and come to a consensus and then a vote on the prioritization of their activities to achieve the goal that's established by the board of all. So having said that, uh, let's just open it up for discussion and uh, <coughs> talk about what our thoughts are. Uh, place our thoughts out there on the table for us to give consideration to, and then the board will, uh, will make their decision. So I open this area up for general discussion. Please speak freely. You do not need to be recognized by the chair. Speak freely. So the, the auditor is working on the current the audit for fiscal year 2022. Is that correct? The 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 uh, period ending is there the ending September 2021? Uh, 2022. 2022. My bad. Uh, I messed it up. So the bank reconciliation and the general measure you're saying from October 22, which would be the 2023, correct? Yes. Mm -hmm. And that all needs to still be working. So September 22 to October 23. 
September. Yeah, 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 that's where yeah. I got messed up. September 22 to October. Yeah. Is that correct, Danette? I'm sorry. Oh, September 22 to October 23. Yes. Okay. And the auditor has some requirements. And I just got a text message from him two days ago, and I, I, I went back to him again to make sure that the information I got was correct. But uh, the the, uh, the the ending balance uh, for 2022, the beginning balance for 2023, which I'm not an auditor, but or, Discussions with our current administrative staff. Um, I have reason to believe that those numbers can now be obtained for the auditor. Danette, am I speaking correctly? They will not be accurate, but we can get them numbers to start on. Yeah. Yes. Mm -hmm. but that, that's that's more than they received since the. Uh, I think the, the, the initial the initial request for that day was in November of 2023. From the auditor to our office, and so we have the audit, uh, which is uh, holding us back on um, the bond issues. So you know, we have that. We have the general ledger that needs to be uh, corrected and brought up today. And I asked the question if if it, if, if it's as in this the question was not uh, the question was posed to someone who is no longer under our employee. I would advise that no, it has not been maintained this year. I do not know that to be an accurate statement, and I will not know for a few days. So the, the audit to general ledger uh, for bank reconciliation, am I, am I missing anything? Any like tax, like sales tax due, or any of that stuff that we talked about as well? I'm not aware on the sales tax part. Oh. Uh, Beginning tomorrow, uh, depending upon the outcome of the rest of tonight, uh, we'll, we'll be making uh, some, some uh, deep dives and, and we'll, we will have some discovery to report back to the board. I'm <coughs> confident that we will uncover things that we weren't completely aware of. And nor would uh, these folks necessarily be aware of it because it's not been within their job requirements to participate in those activities after. Uh, hopefully after tonight we'll have a better sense of direction on that. Same with me if we have any delinquent bills. We're going to be digging into that. We had, uh, if, if I may speak freely for a minute, for a minute, uh, we had an occasion this week where, uh, oh good gosh, I'm, I'm forgetting some names. The uh, assistant, what's her name, what's her name? Kim Beers. Excuse me, Kim Beers. Kim, yes, thank you. Uh, Kim came into my office very early and with a they look a great concern on her face because we couldn't buy gas for our police cars and one was sitting at the gas station and even the gas tank filled up. So the uh, that fuel car, fuel main car system uh, had, uh, had uh, I, I was told today that that was an error, that the check that we sent them was going to be a credit on the next statement, that they had been, they, they had been fully paid, that they had just yesterday upgraded their software and somehow, some way it all got hosed. Uh, that's a euphemism for got messed up. And um, it was an error and the, the check we sent them would now be shown as a credit from that. And I said, wonderful, you know, you got to handle it, that's all I care about. Um, I received some hearsay that some other vendors were complaining some of the uh, no specific vendor or supplier name, but uh, some of the department heads have advised me that they have been getting calls from some of their suppliers, which kind of like we're ordering more stuff, and they're saying, well, could you like maybe pay us for what we gave you? And so we're going to be digging all that, and we're going to get to it as quickly as possible, and we'll report back to the board um, any deficiencies that we find, and if, any, if there's anything that we can't handle, we'll, uh, we'll call, we'll, we'll, we'll start calling you folks and do whatever it is that, that needs to be done. But I think right now what we're looking for is you guys to say, and I'm not trying to oversimplify, audit uh, G&L or bank reconciliation, where do you want to start? Go ahead, Jeanette. I, I just want to say one thing. Um, the first, 
and foremost thing that we need to work on is the financial statements uh, for the state auditor's office. It's due. By the end of this month. And if we don't have it? $500 a day fine. A day? A day. Mm -hmm. Well, I guess that kind of changes the scope, <laughs> doesn't it? Uh, yeah. So I know that is definitely something I, I need to get right away, and it'll also need to be published in our newspaper as well. Okay, so if that would be our primary focus, I guess what I would then ask the board, if you don't disagree with the net, what would be our second? How did that get missed? I'm sorry? How did that get missed? I'm not sure. You're allowed six months after the end of your fiscal year to file the report, so we're still within uh, right. that six month period, but it just ends here at the end of April. Because we didn't have a report. <laughs> 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 Still pay those. 
nothing else can be payable until we get that published to the public. So, um, it's May the second. Could it get published before May the second? Well, I mean, it comes out. Uh, the paper comes on Wednesdays, right? Right. Yeah. 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 I I think that the the. the Say, if you say get the numbers to Conway, does that also mean that something else happens to get those numbers that, that would answer some of these other questions? I haven't spoken to him in person, so I'm not exactly certain what he's I'll, requesting. I'll, tomorrow I will show you his text message. Okay, okay. I mean, I've got emails, text messages, I've got copies of text messages <laughs> between him and the previous administration. Okay. Uh, I can share all that with you, and I think by the end of the day, you'll have a very clear picture of what he wants. Sounds good. Okay. I'll do that tomorrow. Okay. I, I, I guess my head's been a little bit because we, I think we all know the audit is just like weighing on everyone's mind. But I'm also concerned if we don't work on the bank reconciliation, the general ledger, are we going to get same place we're in now at the end of fiscal year. If, if we focus all of our time trying to get the audit done, which I think is a priority, but if we're dropping the ball on these other things, are we going to be in the same position when it comes to audit time? Um, we're, we're, uh, dollar G, that, um, how do I want to do this? Um, I, think that, I think it would be a fair statement to say that uh, probably within the next Two to three weeks, certain activities are going to occur uh, depending upon depending upon board the board's uh, board's decisions they will make. But we've got some opportunities uh, to uh, bring in some additional resources okay. that may allow us to work in tandem. And, and I, I really should have said that first, so we weren't thinking that we've got. You know, <coughs> one or two people doing all of this. I think we're going to be able to, and, and, and we will all know more about that later uh, tonight, but I'm not at liberty to have that discussion uh, in this in this forum. Uh, so what do you think you want to say? say um, well, what, what would you suggest the next thing to do? Or I guess I don't understand, and I mean, because I don't know, <coughs> how you could have an audit ready if you don't have the GLA thing. I think that all is year subsequent to the audit, oh, you're saying exactly. Yeah. Audit is in September 30, 2022, mm -hmm. um, and they're talking bank reconciliation generally. So if, would you just start that? I mean, I'm assuming if it's not ready, <coughs> if you can't get an audit, we have, don't have these other two numbers done back to some, I mean, once you get it ready by September 2022, or whatever your next number is, you've started the, the first two processes, 
follow that and send it off your audit just keep on working towards that until yeah. current. Get an actual financial audit right. instead of just an opinion audit, I think is what this is I see, isn't it? A non-opinion only audit would provide the most value to the city because it would prevent, well, it, it, would, it, it would probably uh, very, very quickly remove many of the potential concerns someone who's going to initiate the bond would have. It, it, it's it, by doing that what the board just spoke to is it will increase the value of the audit to us as an entity. Hey, I'm I think sure. I have enough money in the bank to pay you back, but I have a early chat. Right. You okay with that? How much time does that add to an audit? Well, in a year, I mean, I don't know. How much more time? Sincerely, sincerely, I don't know a lot about this. I mean, we can quickly address the insult into that. But if you give them the data they've asked for, and the data you've given them is factual, mm -hmm. and they know that it's factual based upon the general ledger being corrected and the bank statements being reconciled, it's now very valid information. It's no longer an opinion. Right. And at one point in time, the board, not this board, was satisfied with an opinion. So, knowing no more than what I'm thinking, I'm guessing 30 days if he had everything we needed, or less. For the audit to be completed? Yeah. For a non opinion Well, if For a non opinion uh, just in my experience in the past, um, you'll have Debbie down is that that doesn't surprise me. And uh, okay, so what what says what says the board? Have you have you made a determination on what item number two or priority number two should be? Well, I mean, if that makes sense, I, I kind of agree with Lori's statement that you have to have your your statements up to date up to the requested audit figure so far. Set those off, and then you continue that process along. I mean, that, that's the way I would think you financial data. You start at the beginning, you gotta work your way through. Yeah, so when you, when you do the reconciliations, is that the all from opportunity to make those, those uh, general ledger entries? Yes. Mm -hmm. Okay, so we do, we, do the, we do the bank reconciliation in concert with the general ledger yes. corrections, and then we'll have the data for the audit. So it's, it's, based, it's basically uh, uh, bank reconciliation uh, and GNL. And then number three, because of all the data you've collected, now becomes the audit. Are we all okay with that? Yes. Now, I want to. But I want to clarify. Wait. I want to clarify. We're talking the same time period because the audit we're working on now ends September 30th, 2022. Correct. And they're saying any balance of that. Yes. Is that correct? <clears throat> I'm sorry. The audit that, that Mr. Anyway, the auditors working on is for the time period beginning September 30, 2022. Correct? I believe that is the last time that we have found general ledger and uh, bank record. September. September 30, 2023, year in. So the beginning balances would be September 30th, 2022, year end. Okay, okay. Does that help? I, I it does. Yeah, that's the last well, time. That shouldn't yeah. take any time to get then because if we are needing the numbers for September 30th, I believe we already have all that. I'm going to give this to you. You, you need starting numbers. Right now you, you need, need starting to. numbers right. then. Yeah. Okay. Because I said clear, clear, 
clarify which fiscal year you're talking about, but he said numbers of fiscal year. I don't know which one you're talking about. So September 30, 2023, year end. And so the beginning balances would be September 30, 2022, year end. Okay. Does that make sense to you? No, Good. it doesn't. Because he, that's saying he's just auditing fiscal year. He's all, he's just all for, ended. He's auditing 2023. And I get it now. He wants to start with October 1. Yeah. yeah. October 1. So yeah. Beginning, the beginning so down to the beginning down to the year. Yeah. Okay. So he has a full year. Okay. Right. okay. okay. It, it's the way he worded it. Yeah. yeah. Mm -hmm. The way he worded it. The beginning balances, which, which is what she's saying. But they those beginning balances would be September 30, 2022, year end numbers. Yeah. So he's right. going to begin with. What you're going to end with is the September 30, 2023 numbers. That helps. It does help. I wish I read it that way. Well, that's not, I don't feel like that's going to be much of an issue then because if our bank record GL is balanced up until that point, uh, according to you know what, what you mentioned earlier, then I think it goes to me. Okay, so it doesn't change the prioritization. No. It just means that we we may have an opportunity to get there a little faster than we thought we were going to. I'm speaking not for no, I you. Agree. So is it fair to say that our that our first priority then, and what's going to happen? I'm going to say this, and then I'm going to ask for someone to put it to them in the form of a motion, and we're going to vote on it. I want it on the record. The reason why uh, I, I'm sitting in the audience, and I'm sure you got this up here, and you've heard us, you've heard. We heard the board regurgitate this issue with the audit over and over and over. And I felt like if we can get it on the record, there's no question as to what the board's expectation is from the administration of City Hall. Is that fair? Mm -hmm. Fair. Okay. So, uh, what the board has stated is that their priorities are uh, the financial statement and publication is their first priority. Their second priority is the bank reconciliation and general ledger. And their third priority, which is enabled by the first two, is getting the data requested to the auditing company, uh, which is commonly known. So I would entertain a motion to accept that prioritization. We have a motion. We have, we have a first. We have a second. We have a second. Uh, all in favor, please say aye. 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 All, in, all opposed. The ayes have it, and that now goes on the records and the minutes. Thank you all so very much for allowing us to get through that. It certainly clears up any potential questions going forward. The next thing uh, we have uh, is. Uh, the Monroe City Banking sub-accounts and authorization uh, is, unless Danette wants to talk about uh, the sub-accounts issue, is probably going to go away until our next meeting because that was something uh, that the individual who resigned uh, had requested to be uh, on, on the agenda and the court does not have sufficient time to review the agenda. <coughs> Uh, however, authorizations are required. Uh, what we need from this board is uh, it has to be done in the form of a motion, and it has to go on to the minutes that regarding the banking accounts. The banking account uh, currently would the authorizations for the banking account, which means access to it and the ability to sign checks, uh, would be the mayor, the city clerk, whose office currently currently is uh, vacant, the uh, president of the board of aldermen, who is currently uh, Jason Osborne, and the fourth member. Uh, at the recommendation of the uh, of, of the mayor is uh, Lori Clinton. 
And so that provides uh, a very good possibility that in the absence of myself or others that in the case of emergency, we will be able to locate two approved and authorized members of the board and or mayor's office uh, to uh, initiate the financial transaction. And so uh, I would entertain a motion from someone on this board to speak those names and ask for the board to approve those individuals be authorized on the city of Mono City banking accounts. Mr. Mayor, can I have some questions real quick? Go for it. Should this be done by resolution? You show that the bank's okay with the minute. Okay. So, well, I was yeah, going to ask for I was going to ask for someone to name the names, vote on it, and approve it. That way, we got both of them covered. Okay. And I'll take a minute. Do we need to appoint a temporary city clerk? Uh, I would submit for your consideration that we now elect to move further discussion on the bank authorizations until after the completion of the closed session. I need a motion to do that. I have a motion to move the discussion on Monroe City banking and sub account authorizations to after the adjournment of the closed session. Okay. All in favor? Aye. All opposed? Yes, Chief James. Um, does, does this list include those able to sign on sub accounts? Or is this just for the primary? May I explain? Mm -hmm. Please, I, I'm not sure I understand what sub accounts we have. May I explain? The, uh, the city clerk had, had came to me and had proposed that because of potential, I'm speaking out of turn, potential uh, expected uh, administrative action that may occur in the future, she had requested that I present to the board a recommendation to create a separate account for library and to create um, a second point, a uh, second account for um, parks and recreation and a separate account for the fire department. And I think what she was uh, attempting to, to do was to start uh, being able to, uh, these are her words, not mine, uh, it, it would make it easier uh, on the application upon receipt of whatever funding mechanisms out there, this is the library, parks, and cemetery, and, and the fire department. And so I, at her request, I was gonna bring that up. That's what we can table uh, well, we can't table that for yeah. me, but what we can't table uh, is the authorizations for right. the banking. So right. we'll do all of that. We'll talk about tabling that and the authorizations after uh, the closed session. So okay. currently, we don't have any sub accounts. No. Okay. Just one bank account. We have one bank account. We we have one general banking account, and that includes all the city funds. Uh, we. I believe we already have a police account that was, that's separate. Yeah, and that's what I was wondering if yeah. this list was going to affect that at all. Mm -hmm. No, no. Okay. I think the short answer and the only answer is no. Okay. So that would be one sub account. We have another sub account for the wastewater um, the project office. and uh, the construction. And we have another sub account that's the uh, sweep. It's called sweep account. I this is where we make right. interest for extra okay. deposits. Okay. So, so anyway, we'll, we'll have an opportunity, to, I guess, to, at some point in the future to address all that or something that needs to be addressed to bring all the, the learned learned individuals together and, and, and hopefully make the right decisions. But uh, Chief, no, we're, yeah, that, we're, not, that we're not touching any of your... No, that, that cleared all that up. So. But just, okay, so... Um, the next issue uh, uh, requires some explanation. Uh, 
uh, Cassie County administrative rights um, need to be expanded uh, to allow those who are, are, those who are uh, uh, required by ordinance to uh, supervise uh, and manage, uh, and that would include the chief <coughs> officer, which uh, the orders is passed by the board have said that's the merit. Uh, what that means is that I can't check the payroll accounts. I can't check to see how many hours that have been uh, turned in to be paid. I can't look to see if there's any anomalies. I can't see if anything appears to make sense or not make sense. So I was going to suggest that the board approve Tessian administrative rights to the mayor's office, me, and also to the mayor pro tem, whomever that might be. Uh, currently, it's Mr. Osborne, well, I'm quite sure it's going to be a good But we won't know that until May. But anyway, if we can get the board's approval to expand the Tessian rights and get it on record that the mayor shall have the access to Tessian records, administrative rights as well as the mayor pro tem and of course the city clerk's office already will have that because they currently administrate all of that. Uh, and this is basically a recognition that sometimes it happens and we need to have a second set of eyes. So uh, I would entertain a motion uh, from the from someone within the Board of Alderman to grant administrative rights to the mayor's office and to the mayor pro tem for Tessian administration. I make a motion to extend administrative rights to the mayor and mayor pro tem for Tessian software. We have a motion, we have a second. I'll second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. All opposed? Ayes have it. And so it's on the record. Who currently has administrative rights to Tessian? It's currently employed. Do we need to have those? No remote? ones. We need to have those remote? So the form those steps remote. will be taken immediately after you pass this. Okay. You just you just you just handle it. Okay. But the direct answer to your question is no one. Now All right. All right. <clears throat> that that person resigned. Yeah. Uh so that takes care of the Tessian administrative rights. Next thing is city property and building access. <coughs> I asked the question uh, my first day in office, and I asked the question, I said, uh, how do I get in the building? Can I have a key? And I was told, no, can't have a key. <laughs> There's never had a key. And I'm going, well, that's sure strange. I mean, you, you let me sign checks and you let me supervise people and do all kinds of stuff, and I can't come in the building. And I thought, wow, I guess there's no policy or procedure setting anywhere that said mayor can't have a key. And so I said, well, I'm going to fix it. That's why I thought. I made a motion. <laughs> <That's why laughs> I, I, got, I got one more step. Okay, okay. One more step. you finished. Okay. In the absence of the mayor, okay, uh, if I go on vacation or something, uh, the mayor pro tem needs to have access to the mayor's office, the mayor's records, the mayor's stamp, and, and we go basically the mayor pro tem immediately has the power and authority of the mayor. So I was going to ask the board to do two things: grant the mayor the authority to have a key to get in the front door. I don't want to go to public works. I don't want the sewer plant. I just want to get in my office. <laughs> so I was going to, uh, I, I was going to propose an all seriousness that you authorize on on paper, on paper, you know, by policy, by by vote, that the mayor and the mayor pro tem are allowed to have a key to enter city hall. That's it. I got two questions with that. One, who currently has keys? Apparently, yeah. everybody with me. Okay. And now, two, Alex, you got a key? I do. Dan, have you have a key? <laughs> Dan, you have a key? Okay. I know that the only people would clean the building have a key. Are there any regulatory <laughs> issues with access with the state offices, you know, that we have in there that 
Yes. All right. If, it be, if, if there are, we haven't been paying attention to them, but okay. go ahead. Well, I, okay. That's all I go ahead. To know. Is it reported that one of you all has the keys to the building? It was a get, you know, get an out. <laughs> Gary, what do you know about all that? Uh, back key for the key, key to the front door. They offered me one as a building <laughs> attack. <laughs> and I denied it. Everybody's got a key. Everybody's got a key. Everybody gave me the phone number until I get a key. You don't ask the key I've already got. <laughs> <laughs> so, I'm sorry. You have a lot of that. Yeah. 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 A comment. Let's please. So the only issue, the exterior keys you can get, the problem is the interior keys because it's a special industrial type of key. I've been trying to throw these in order to make another set, but the keys or the interior doors, like that door to go from like the stairwell to the. That's a good point. So there is some no, issue with. The, well, there is issue because it's a certain type of key. They need it to know some type of door. Same key as the one on the south. So if you came in on the south and you came through both of those doors, you could still get to the mayor's office if you got here by you still got two different sheets the inside door and the outside door. But you wouldn't need one for the gate. Uh, the gate is actually one of the door keys too. Um, just so you know, and please don't anyone I'm not trying to shade anyone, and I, I do not believe anyone in my office uh, would do anything about that. I can't lock my office. Every day when I leave, I think everything that I have is to lose my notes and plan, but might say names, dates, and if I, if I, if I would observe something that I, I think I need to write down, I write it down. I think all of them, I can't lock my office. It's in the insurance office. It's just in the office. As far as you know, can any of the offices be locked? I mean, the city administrator, the mayor's office? Uh, there is a key for the city administrator. Right? Say, I know at one time that was being locked, locked in the yeah. administrator. Zach? Uh, Alex, I can come over tomorrow. We've had to do that before. There's a number that's on the inside of the lock tumblers that you have to get to buy a quick the key. Okay. That'll let them know what scheme that you go with. That would be fantastic. So anyway, we had a look. Yo, go away. I'm like, uh, I have to get, I have to get him for everything. No, uh, we had a motion on the floor to.
Let me know when you guys are better for me than that, though. Are we good to go? Okay. At this time, uh, the board will go into closed session as authorized by 610.021, Section 3, the hiring, firing, disciplining, disciplining, or promoting a particular employee by a governmental body when personal information about the employee is discussed or reported. And if anyone chooses to stick around, there will most likely be additional actions and votes on the completion and return to the regular meeting. At this time, we will retire to the... I need a roll call. I'll call it out. No roll call. to go into second session. Can I say something, please? Yeah. Uh, Danette and Alex have been nothing but uh, exceptional for me and, and the job they're doing under the conditions we've been through. I think they're doing wonderful. I second that. <laughs> I, I, I appreciate the word. They're very helpful. And I'm sure the board will take into consideration in their deliberations. So thank you very much. Hey, Ma'am. Uh, ma may, may I clarify? Is the uh, banking sub accounts going to be discussed after the closed session or in a separate meeting? It, it's been tabled for tonight. It will be done in a separate meeting. Okay, thank you. At, at which time you'll be able to uh, to certainly share your input and thoughts. <coughs> Roll call. Uh, Lori. Well, there needs to be a motion to go. I make a motion to go into closed section 610.021, section 3, hiring, firing, disciplining, or promoting a particular employees by a public governmental body when personal information about the employee is discussed or reported. We have a motion on the floor. Do we have a second? Second. Roll call vote. Lori? Yes. Adrian? Yes. Mr. Osborne? Simpson? Yes. Mike? Yes. All right. Gary? <laughs> <laughs> okay, there you go. We will be back at the meeting. We will be back at the Okay. Uh, 
But and you are going to square your answer. Uh, right? I will square you in tomorrow morning in the mayor's office on our arrival. I've got to get the book to figure out how to do it. Uh, I've never done that before, but I'll, I'll be able to. Thank you. Thank you. Okay. Congratulations. 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 The uh, second issue, uh, as a result of the deliberations in the closed session, is the uh, modification of employment to full-time associate for Alex Siebert and a increase uh, to his current rate of pay of one dollar per hour. I need a motion. I'll make the motion to make Alex Siebert is it Siebert or Cyber? Cyber. Cyber. Uh -huh. A full-time employee with the city of Monroe City with a one dollar an hour pay increase. Do we have a motion? Do we have a second? Sir. We have a motion and a second. All in favor say aye. 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 <laughs> All in favor say nay. The motion is passed. Congratulations, Alex. <laughs> With there being no further business to conduct on the agenda, unless there are important statements or issues to be addressed, we will go into adjournment. I Did we make a motion to do the bank accounts? Oh, yeah. We, we have, we have, that, that's, that's right. Table. That's right. Yeah. That's right. We table that. Thank you so very much. A couple of items. Uh, all, uh, all, all the all one. one. <coughs> the Saunders. That's been like two minutes. We'll okay, one. so we'll back to the uh, bank, uh, uh, City of Monroe City Banking Authorization. We need a motion uh, to approve the authorizations for the mayor, the mayor pro tem, the city clerk, we now have one, mm -hmm. and uh, also uh, Alderman Lori Quinn. And since it's now a portion of the meeting minutes, we can move forward with filling out the appropriate documentation and getting it to the bank tomorrow so we can continue to conduct business. Should probably do a motion. But right. So, do we have a motion? Make a motion for to add the mayor, Ronnie Miller, the mayor pro tem, Jason Osborne, Alderman Lori Quinn, and the city clerk, Jeanette Henderson, to our Mono City Banking accounts. Second the meeting. Second. I have a motion and a second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Should I abstain since it is good? Okay. Motion passes. <laughs> I, had, I had kind of get pause there. I don't know what happened next. Is there any further business for this board? So the planning and zoning, you already had the citizen part of that taken care of? Yes. Well, uh, what happened is we, uh, the only citizen that was up for, um, whose term was ending at the end of April was Mr. Yeager. And during the last meeting, we approved, we approved uh, uh, Mr. Gary Yeager for an additional four year term. And so uh, the other members are Mr. Chuck Mudd, good God help me, Man, Matt Anderson, <laughs> and I'm going to go on blank, and Mr. David Benson. Out of the four citizen members, the commission is comprised of four citizen members that I just named, two aldermen who are elected by this board, the mayor, and the city attorney as an ad advise board. That's how the commission is set up. All seats are now filled. Have I answered your question? No. Do they has a first meeting been set? No, okay. because we did not have commission and that activity will take place tomorrow okay. to establish and direct the first meeting so we can address schools requirements. Have I answered your question? Yep. Any further business? I will entertain a motion to go into adjournment. So much. We have a first, we have a second. We have a first and second. 
to adjourn this meeting. All in favor, please say aye. Aye. Anybody opposed? This is right. We stand adjourned. <laughs> I think that was five minutes. I that, that was five minutes. Yeah, that's over time. It was close. <laughs>